like a lot of people were very inspired by it and went on to do other things and I think that we were pretty much inspired by the sort of energy that was happening then and it was a very positive force for us. But punk only lasted one year. Unlike rock and roll in the 50s and modern beat in the 60s, punk never became a best-selling style of music. In 1977, the year of punk, no record by a punk band was among the 50 top-selling singles. The main reason for this was that punk worked much better live than it did on records. So what it, you must have been asked a million times, but what does it feel like to have been Johnny Rotten and the Sex Pistols now? Is it a memory? Is it? A... I don't know. I mean, ask the imitators how they feel. To me, it didn't mean too much. I just thought it was a joke. Could you look around and see yourself ending up, say, like the Clash have, like on this endless spiral? Of... God only knows. I hope not. Were you the only one with ambition then? Because the other geezers in it, I mean, they seem to be lost. Um, How much ambition have you got? talking about? Well, Stephen Paul, obviously not Stephen. I don't know. Listen, I mean, in the Pistols, it was difficult because they were all into, like, I don't know, the regular rock and roll format, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, and I just couldn't write things like that. It worked for the time, though, didn't it? It worked, yeah, for a bit. And then Malcolm Wright like, began to take it all just too serious. Joe, everyone thinks of you as well as being the musical force behind the Sex Pistols. I had nothing to do with the music of that band. I just wrote the words. You never wanted to write any of the music? No. Not, not the way they were doing it. My ideas were totally different. Another school of... Well, I mean, it was a chance for me, right? So I took it. Because I quite like the way I write. Was it a laugh at the beginning? Yeah, I, mean, I just you... had to set off a duff old Chuck Berry reruns, but that's... I don't know, it got me a foot in the door, so I took it. Was it a laugh at the beginning? Did you think it would amount to anything? I never thought it would get anywhere, never in a million years. It just was like a real good piece of fun. It's a good career for a young man to get into, being in a group. <laughs> no, I could do without the competition. <laughs> <laughs> see, I always see record companies as working for the groups and not the other way around. Uh, unfortunately, the other way around does seem to be the scheme of things. A record company to me is merely distribution and what, with minimal promotion depending on their finances. But uh, well, over the years they've slowly like developed into like dictators. They tell you how your record should sound that's why they insist on managers and promoters and all those middlemen that confuse you to keep you as far away from the like, realities of it as possible. So do you think... And you that's, that's something I've always like, not liked. Do you think it's possible to make a record company work for you? Can you do it on your own? It's damn difficult, but I mean, uh, the alternative is to let them dictate to you right from the start and then you've had it, you've finished. Best to know what your own song sounds like than yourself. Why get someone in to, like, dictate the way it should be? So, do it yourself. So, finally, do you think it's... Now, a... I know it takes time to learn, like, the like, ins and outs of a studio, but it's no way near as complicated as people would like you to believe. I mean, like, when you see it first, like, this big desk with just a million knobs, it doesn't mean anything. All it is is just a load of channels, all identical. And like what you've got, bass, high bass, low bass, treble, this, that and the other, echo. And once you've understood that, anyone can do it. It's the same as the controls on an amplifier.